Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. In our show last week, we covered the first part of our recent downtown forum on the new era of Hawaii politics. In our show this week, we'll cover part two of that forum. That is the Q&A and discussion among the panelists, along with audience reaction. After a keynote by Steve Petranek, editor of Hawaii Business Magazine, Barbara Tanabe skillfully moderated a panel of six commentators well familiar with politics in Hawaii. Daryl Huff of Hawaii News Now, Beth Ann Kozlovich of Hawaii Public Radio, Shad Blair of Civil Beat, Andrew Walden of Hawaii Free Press, and Malia Zimmerman of The Hawaii Reporter. After the panelists made their initial presentations, Barbara Tanabe conducted Q&A with questions submitted through the internet on livesift.com. So there may never be another Senator Dan, you know it. But among those who are candidates today or political leaders or active in the community, who are some of the emerging people to watch? Let's see, let's hear some names um, that, that are starting to pop up. I think you'll, you'll hear a lot about Billy, Billy Kanoi, the mayor of the Big Mayor Island. of Big Island. Um, of, of, of new names that, that are popping up, that's the one that jumps into my mind. I think that uh, quite a number of the former Inouye Hanapusa people will be picking up on that, on his future. Okay, let's just go down the list and, and uh, the, who's uh, I completely that? agree on Billy Kanoi. He's one to watch. If it's not going to be governor, it's going to be Congress. Um, Tulsi Gabbard is our rock star. Whether you like her or not, um, it's uncanny that someone in their first term is a regular on Meet the Press and all the other shows. And of course, it's because she's a veteran. That has a lot to do with it. She's also uh, charismatic and, and, and articulate. And, and uh, I th I'll let others say it for me. Uh, who thank who you. said that? <laughs> it was a male that said that? Yes, it was. All right, that's OK. Um, um, Brian Schatz, I'd keep an eye on that guy. Um, I mean, when guys like Al Gore are endorsing you or Harry Reid in your first term, he's definitely getting attention. Maisie Hirono. I mean, everyone says lazy Maisie, but think about it. She's really a survivor, and she beat Ed Case and Linda Lingle two years ago. And I think now, without Annoy around, she's kind of flexing her, her, her wings a little bit, and, and I see her doing things that are under the radar, but she's, she's someone that I think is really kind of impressive. So with Annoy gone in so many ways, and then there's a lot of people at the legislative level too, but um, it does open up. Like I said, Generation Dan prevented all these other voices from coming forward, many of them, and now we're starting to hear some of those. There's Dan? also a question in all that, of, are these really new names? You know, looking out into the community, are these really new names? We're talking about them in some ways as if they are, but uh, in a lot of ways, they're not. And how deep does this really go? How much are we really growing people? Those are some of the questions that we ask. Um, Andrea Tupola, why not? Running for House 43. That's a real name, a real new name. Uh, Billy Kanoy, he got to start raising $100,000 for the legal defense fund of the Pali shooter, Malamota. So he definitely has an inf a future with the Inouye group. That's just the kind of guy they're looking for. Malia? I'd agree that. Um Senator Schatz is uh, definitely up and coming. And, uh, and Billy Kanoy uh, really came on the scene for people who had seen his video his of YouTube, him. YouTube, the commencement exercise. Right, the commencement exercise. He really showed his personality. And, um, and uh, I think that was uh, made the rounds and that people uh, really could relate to him because he has a, he's very charismatic. And, and he's cute. Yeah, and he, and he, and he, inspired, the, and he inspired the kids. <laughs> He, in, he inspired the kids, and he, ha, he had a great message for them, and so I think, and, and, and just for everyone. So um, definitely I would put them. And, of course, Tulsi Gabbard, um, although I know some Democrats don't like her because they feel she's all about Tulsi, she has been very good at getting media coverage and, um, and working with the press um, on the national level. I'm not sure about locally as much, but definitely she's been able to get a lot of, of national coverage. So, But I agree with Beth Ann. In terms of are they really new names, um, I don't know how much, the, there are people running for office who are new names. I don't know how much uh, momentum they'll get. Um, a lot of, we do see a lot of uh, 
for example, social conservative Republican candidates that come out and, and run, but I don't know how much the social conservatives will come out and actually vote for them. So we'll, we'll have just have to see how that goes. Colin? Well, these guys stole my name, which was going to be Billy Canoy. So, um, so I will say that, um, you know, Brian Schatz has had tremendous success in the brief time he's been in the Senate. I mean, the fact that President Obama went so far as to endorse him in his election shows how valuable he seems to be to the Democratic Party in the Senate. So, um, you know, he's you know, going to be a very powerful voice if he wins, you know, two years from now, which I expect he will. Various panels have mentioned that both political parties, the Democrats and the Republicans, seem to be in disarray, in confusion, chaos, split, broken into factions. So going forward, what do we see happening to these political parties? Nationally or, or locally? Um, let's try to do it here. Let's try to take a look at Hawaii. Uh, for now, the Republican Party seems to have united. It disunites every two years regularly. Uh, but uh, it, under Pat Psyche's leadership, um, and with two very viable candidates, Duke Iona uh, for governor, and, um, and um, Charles, Charles DeJue, DeJue, who's another person I would put up there as someone to keep an eye on if he can get past Mark Takai. Cam, I, are you still here? I, if in, oh, hi, Cam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think our polls that we just came out this week, we have Ige up by four over Iona, but pretty much a tie. And the reverse, Dijoux up by four over, did I get the wrong? And Iona, margin of error. Thank you, yeah. Uh, it's right within the margin. It's close is what I'm saying. And, and I think there's a real good chance you could have, because of the Democrats' disarray, a Republican governor and a Republican first congressional district member again. I, I think it's possible, real possible. Okay, anyone else want to jump in on the disarray of the, our parties? Well, I'd just add that I think parties in general are declining and that that's probably a good thing. That creates more chaos. Chaos is good. The more political competition, the more facts become exposed to the, to the, to the people. Um, and so what really matters is who emerges, what candidates start to emerge. Okay. I think, I think it just depends on what happens with this election. For example, if um, Duke Iona wins or Charles Dijoux wins, I think the Republicans will be organized, more organized and rally around them and use that for fundraising and things like that. If they don't, the Republicans um, will, you know, and don't pick up more seats, they'll, they'll just go back to the way they were. And uh, so we'll just have to really see what happens in November. Okay, so we might go back to the future. Oh, Daryl wants just, to say something. Just really briefly, I think that generally speaking, people uh, consider the parties very valuable to them as voters. They're, they're used to it, uh, and I'm, I'm sorry if I sound like a conventional thinker. I think if the parties are successful in identifying themselves ideologically and identifying themselves and messaging well to voters, that they will benefit again from this even more even playing field. Mm -hmm. But I think ultimately to make voting more interesting for people, we need to have a strong at least two party system, maybe three parties, but we need multiple parties. We need competition. Probably we need initiative uh, and recall so that we have something to vote on when we get to the general election. I think that would be a lot to make people more excited. After Q&A, the panelists made their final statements and each gave us one word as a takeaway for the audience. Their comments were useful, particularly given the proximity of Election Day in an important election year, now less than a month away. Back to the original point, I think that uh, we do have a more even playing field in this community now that uh, Senator Inouye has passed. Uh, I think that the, the time for the young candidates to step up is here. We didn't mention Shan Tsutsui. Um, I also have met a lot of very bright young people running for House who I think will, will be moving up and catching people's attention. Again, everyone has to work hard to make the electoral process work. We can't just sit on our butts and expect someone else is going to make the decisions for us and uh, you know, allow things to get better. So my word is attentiveness. Thank you. Well, as you go forward and as we all go forward into whatever may be next, to really look at the idea of what change is. What do we really mean when we talk about change? That word is bandied about so much. It's taken on so many permutations and not really understanding what that change truly means. And uh, going back to the idea that I said at the very beginning, when the actors change, how much does that impact the play? 
That is very much up to us. You don't have to sit back and just take what is coming at you one directionally. You can do something about it, you know. You can say to your TV station, your radio station, print, I don't really see any of this. How about some of that? I mean, take a little bit of initiative and question some of your own beliefs as you do it. Maybe we'll get a little bit more rich dialogue in there, and that may give way to a little bit more of some of the of political life that we'd like to see, despite your, some of the social science that says that may not happen. And your word, one word? <laughs> and my one word would be to question. I'm not gonna repeat everything I said. I, I appreciate the, the time to, to share all these thoughts. Uh, it's been a very, this is not what I expected coming out of this, and I think it's really been enlivening. Somebody said you're on a blue ribbon panel. I said, I, maybe it's Pap's blue ribbon, but. <laughs> no, it's been a real delight. My word to leave you with is vote. That's my word. There's a lot of chaos. This is a situation that was handed to us rather than one that we created, which means that we haven't really built up a new leadership to take advantage of the chaos that's emerging. Um, and the other part of this picture is that we all have to pay the price for the profligacy of the uh, last few decades, and that's why Hawaii has the highest debt levels and the highest tax levels and the worst business environment in the nation. And um, so the one advantage that we have is that the political class is in chaos. And when they're in chaos and when they're fighting amongst themselves, um, things become revealed to the people. And that gives people the opportunity to step forward and change things. And so my watchword is chaos. Okay, I just think that this is one of the most interesting time in politics in Hawaii's history, and, I, and at least at the 20-something years I've been covering politics, I think anything can happen, and that was what we saw in the last election. And um, because of the alliances and the disarray that the, my word would be uh, for what's coming is opportunity. So again, isn't this just a tremendously exciting time? I mean, like I said, there's a vacuum, there's more voices, there's less control. I mean, our politicians today are probably a bit scared and, and good. Scared politicians are responsive politicians. Um, they should be worried about losing their seat. I don't know about you, but when the candidates talk about you know, dedicating the next 20 years of their life to a congressional seat or a Senate seat, I think, you know, how ridiculous that you assume that. We shouldn't have let them assume that. Um, and, um, you know, the other thing I'll say is pay attention to our Hawaii Republican Party. I mean, I know it's going to be tough, but I think this is going to be an extraordinary thing to watch now because, you know, it could be the leading edge of kind of a new vision for the Republican Party here. You know, if they can make it work here in a liberal state, in a multi-ethnic state, um, you know, this could be a model for a change for the mainland Republican Party, and I, I hope it will be. I mean, we need a competitive election cycle here. Even if you're not a Republican, you should root for them. Thank you very much, panelists, for a really interesting discussion. After the program, Think Tech walked the floor to poll the speakers and the audience on their reactions to the discussion and the program. For me, I was a little surprised that we suddenly talked so much about journalism. And I don't know if that was a function of the panel so much as it was the audience. If that's what the audience wanted to talk about, that's great. But I thought it was pretty enlightening. I thought it was excellent. Yeah, nice job. I thought it was great. I would love to see more of these types of panels being put on. It's always wonderful. I thought it was great. And you had enough of a mixture, and you had from the Walden to the Daryl Hoff, and you had you know, the, the Colin Moore. Just really a well-balanced panel, and, and really interesting stuff we learned today, and the inside scoops, too. So that was wonderful. It was a great panel. I, I, I really interesting range of, of opinions. Um, people didn't agree, you know, they, they disagreed with each other. That's always good. It's good to have reporters disagreeing with each other. And, and it reflects the, the diversity of, of, of journalistic sources that are available. You know, journalism is not dead. It's thriving in many different ways. You know, it, yes, there are some things that have that have died and have gone away and wish, wish there was more investigative reporting, yes. Uh, it's very expensive, so that's one of the reasons there's not enough of it. Um, but good for you, good for organizing this. Uh, uh, a lot of interesting points made today about the new era in politics. It, it is a new era. When you have uh, powerful people like Inoue gone, uh, that in and of itself, even if the people are followers of Inoue, he, without him here, it, it definitely signals a new era.
stimulating. It actually caught me by surprise. Uh, it wasn't canned stuff. It was uh, unexpected. Um, and you saw the audience stayed here. They did not leave. And it was a full house. So that made me feel like they got their money's worth. I think I was very pleased with this event. It was not what we expected, but I think it turned out better. We talked about press, we talked about issues that reporters face and how to better broaden our base and talk about the issues that really matter and look at it from both lenses, the publics and the presses. In order for society to be free, it needs a free press. And I think that today here at Think Tech Hawaii, we saw that we can have one as long as there's competition of ideas. I'm so glad that we had the full range of journalists represented here from the conservative to the libertarian, and that's what makes Think Tech Hawaii a great place to convene meetings. Jay Fidel, you're doing a great job. Wow, it was a great program, and I brought a guest um, who's visiting, and he is really impressed. He really enjoyed this program. He's not from here, his parents live here, but uh, in fact, you might want to interview him. He's right here. I thought it was very informative. I was happy to uh, be able to come here and see it and listen. The uh, Certainly all the speakers uh, had a lot of information. They shared it very well with us. I thought it was outstanding. Um, and I went up and talked to uh, one of the panelists afterwards and said, you know, the thing that strikes me is we're talking about all this change in the vacuum and the, and the chaos. And how canny, uncanny it was that we, we look at politics now more as marketing. How much is a candidate raised? How much, who's got the bigger war chest? And in this election, a lot of the folks with the big war chest didn't come out on top. So maybe folks are, you know, looking historically about voter turnout. Maybe voter turnout's been because we haven't been able to affect any change because of the big machines, because of the big status quo. Maybe this is a time we're gonna see that change. The status quo is going away because the big money doesn't mean the big vote. So that's what I got from it. I think, as, as usual, this is a high-quality panel. It was awesome. It was really challenging questions back and forth and no, no, no easy questions. And I'm really glad. That, that means a lot. I think this is a good conversation starter for a while. The panel was great. It was uh, informative. People were candid. So I felt like you got a lot of truth, a lot of varying opinions, right? So there was good contrast. And I think that's the whole purpose, right? We get different opinions and we start like Alex said, the discussion, so. I thought they were surprisingly candid. Um, I didn't expect it to be uh, as exciting as it really was, and it, it uh, validates uh, what Think Tech's doing. And uh, I think it's an opening for more and better, every day better. It, it's good to be here, and it's good to see competition, and it's good to see it happening. They're not reflecting what's really going on out there, and we're looking for a debate. I just wanted to invite Brian Schatz to debate Cavasso. You know, when Dan Illinois ran for office in his first time, he said he needed the debate, and then they granted it to him. We in Hawaii need to hear both sides of the issue. It was amazingly good. Really high-quality journalist professionals really addressing the issues of our time, and it's changing out there. No wonder that chaos was the number one word. I mean... The top's falling, the bottom's coming up, and who knows what's in the middle, right? There you go. I'm a student. I don't have much comment. I just hope Hawaii will get better and better each day. Thank you. I thought that was terrific. Thank you so much for putting that on. Very informative and interesting about what's going on in Hawaii. And yeah, let's have some change here. We need two parties. We need three parties. <laughs> I would agree with the person who said this is a huge opportunity. Chaos is a good thing. Um, status quo has been reigning for a long time. And the citizens really need to step up and hold. Um, I don't hold the politicians accountable. I actually don't. It is really up to the citizens to do the right thing. Look what just happened in Scotland. It's 16-year-olds voting. They had 87 percent voter turnout on an issue that was just as passionate, had huge consequences. It was civil, it was based on information, and they are moving ahead. It changed things, and Scotland's going to get, you know, they're going to have to wrestle a little bit, but we need to um, be more like Scotland. That'd be a great thing. This show concludes our coverage of the second part of the New Era in Hawaii Politics Forum. Most important, we found the discussion to be fresh, candid, and outside the ordinary box of political rhetoric in Hawaii. Most, if not all, of the speakers were inspired and thoughtful, and whether you agreed with what they said or not, the diversity of their thought was stimulating. 
Clearly, we'll have to do this again. And now let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts video for all of our talk shows live on the internet from 1 to 5 p.m. every weekday afternoon. If you missed a show or you want to replay or share any show, they're all archived on YouTube. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our live stream and YouTube links and to join our email list and to get these links and program advisories on our upcoming shows. We also invite you to be part of our live audience at our downtown studio in Pioneer Plaza. Contact me, Jay, at thinktechhawaii.com. Raise your awareness in every way on ThinkTech. And now, here's this week's ThinkTech Commentary. I'm Donna Blanchard, and this is a ThinkTech Commentary. I'd like to talk about playing. This week, Hawaii News Now reported that the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and Kanu Hawaii created a game that allows voters to take an online quiz to see which of the candidates in the upcoming general election best align with their own political opinions. It's part of a larger effort to increase interest in statewide elections and get more native Hawaiians and others to vote. Now, despite the fact that this is not really a game, it's closer to one of those personality quizzes you see all over Facebook, I think this is a really great idea. I think it's awesome anytime we can turn research or study or anything that could feel like work into play. And taking a survey to find out which Harry Potter character you're most alike or what your spirit animal is or which candidates you should vote for feels like playing. And aren't you more likely to do something if it feels like playing rather than working? I remember installing my first version of Windows and being delighted to find that someone took the time to make the look and sounds of it more than just aesthetically pleasing. They made it fun. Remember that paperclip guy knocking on the glass on your monitor? He got annoying after a while, but admit it, you liked him too. All work and study can't be turned into a game, but respect for play is important to the human condition. In the 1980s, I lived in Chicago, and I remember hearing that the advertising agency Leo Burnett had a game room in their offices downtown. The employees were free to go shoot a game of pool or play chess any time during the day. They were invited to have fun, think about something other than work, or not think at all. And Leo Burnett is still one of the top advertising agencies in the market. 
Now, if you're a boss, you may already be thinking, well, maybe that's something that creative types need, but I run an accounting firm. You need to work there. Well, consider the Google offices. There are plenty of accountants and other non-creatives working there, and they all get to take advantage of the play areas, cafes, coffee bars, outdoor terraces, Broadway-themed conference rooms, and conversation areas designed to look like vintage subway cars. And it seems to be working pretty well for Google. Playful thinking is the wave of now, not the future. That sort of creative respect for the way our minds work best is an example of where our focus should be. Stop trying to solve the same problems with the same solutions. Do your research and try something new, even if it sounds a little crazy. So while you're taking the quiz to determine which candidates are most aligned with you, you might want to keep this in mind. Which candidates will try to solve the same old problems with the same old solutions? And which ones will dare to be innovative? I'm Donna Blanchard, and this has been a ThinkTech Commentary. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of ThinkTech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Duke Oishi does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech on OC16, visit ThinkTechHawaii.com. Be a guest or volunteer or producer or intern and help us reach Hawaii. Thanks so much for joining us on ThinkTech and for supporting tech, energy, diversification, and globalism in Hawaii. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Jay Fidel. Aloha, everyone. Oh, oh.